So thank you for being so patient with me. This is our fifth and final video in this unit. My purpose here is just to do a quick recap because we did cover a lot of things. Uh, so very quickly, we looked at the circular flow. We then realized that the circular flow is describing two major agents, households and firms. And our current effort is to look at households decision making. And when we look at households decision making in the dominant model, it's not the only model, but in the dominant model, we move to the concept of rational economic man or homo economicus, where people maximize something called utility subject to budget constraints. For those of you who are interested in this, there is a huge philosophical controversy about using the concept of utility. The concept of utility is attached to the utilitarians who are part of a British Scottish philosophy. You can look at the work especially of Jeremy Bentham and the uh, idea of utility and rationality that came out of the Benthamites. Uh, but the broader idea is everybody is maximizing their own utility. So we have to first ask questions about utility. What do you do with things like altruism? What do you do with things like caring for people outside yourself? What do you do when, when you have to make assessments of interpersonal utility comparisons? And economics re rejects that. We're not going to compare interpersonal. But when it comes to public policy, we may want to actually do interpersonal comparisons and ask, you know, do we want to compare, you know, how much of our resources do we want to give over to mining versus how much of our resources do we want to give over to uh, maintaining the environment, right? So there are moments when we may want to make interpersonal utility comparisons and say, look, no, I know that's what you want, but that's not where we want our resources to go. So Julie Nelson, the feminist economist, has done a tremendous amount of work on the need to actually replace this idea that we do not do interpersonal utility comparisons with concepts of caring for each other, with concepts of caring for nature. And she uses the word provisioning that we may want to make interpersonal utility comparisons in terms of are we provisioning, providing for health, housing, health, education. That said, rational economic man, we argue, does allocative efficiency because they are using marginal utility following the law of diminishing marginal utility to put together their choices inside the available basket of choices they have in their budget constraint. So it's a very simple idea. Hey, government should not tell you what to like or do. You've got your income, you've got your budget, you should decide what to do. So that's kind of a philosophy behind this rational choice. And the argument is you know best what's best for you. So you do, you do that. Right. And the market will send the resources there. So we saw the law of diminishing marginal utility and we saw how that meant that people could choose between different goods given their budget constraint. Finally, you can use this idea to think about the impact of things like increase in income. So you could increase your income and then if, for example, oranges had more utility than apples, as income increased, your income would go more towards oranges. Right? Or you could look at prices of other goods. If the price of oranges changed, then your MU apples over P apples and MU oranges over P apples would readjust, uh, MU oranges over P oranges would readjust and things would look different because if oranges become more expensive, then you might decide that dollar for dollar, you're not getting as much worth from oranges as you are from apples. So many of the things we did with the demand curve are emerge out of this idea of how people behave. Some of the biggest controversies are going to be 
large markets like labor markets and financial markets where we want to ask whether this is a really good description of how people behave and we want to ask ourselves what does it mean when the theory of demand completely bypasses uh, unpaid labor when it comes to labor market decisions um, and treats a lot of that as leisure so we need to really uh, uh, recalibrate a lot of this. Uh, we don't want to throw it away. There is a lot of work in feminist economics to adjust the theory so that this is integrated into economics. It's just too early for us to do this. Uh, that is the theory of demand.